Welcome back. This is Tea Time on Plus TV Africa. Our guest on this episode is a Nigerian Afropop R&B singer inspired by the likes of Michael Jackson, Fela Nicola Pokuti, and Brandy. She started singing at the age of five in a church choir and since then developed strong interest in singing. At the age of 15, T.Y. Mix discovered and helped her develop her songwriting skills with singles like Echo featuring Files, Take Five, which I love personally, and her later single Ink featuring YC. Let's make welcome Soti. Hey. <laughs> Good to have you here. Good to be here. How are you doing? I'm fantastic. And you? And how is the industry treating you? Well, we're pushing. Mm. <laughs> we are pushing. Mm. And, you know, it gets better every day and okay. every day and every day. So, How yeah. hard would you say you have, you have had to push? Very hard, I won't lie. Especially um, being an independent artist, it's um, kind of tough. But, you know, what it is when you're doing something that you love, it, you know, your passion makes it easier. So mm -hmm. that's it. Okay. So you were with a record label before? Um, yes, I was. I wasn't signed. I was just affiliated mm. with them. But um, after a little while, I left and, you know, decided to do things. Was there a reason myself. you left you want to share with us? Um, let's just say, you know, different, you know, conflict of interest. I think that's what they call it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so that was it pretty much. And um, funny thing is I'm actually happier on my own. I'm mm. getting to discover myself a little better, you know, much better actually. And, you know, I'm happy. Mm. Amazing you said um, you're, you're happier doing your own thing your, on your own right now. Yes. Now, I was going to ask you, what, what does it feel like not being on the label and pushing your music all by yourself? Definitely there are challenges. Of course, there are, there are challenges. Um, However, um, I wouldn't say I experience much of a change because I'm somebody who's always um, liked to be in control of things going on around me. So I like to know. I don't just sit down. And, you know, so, I mean, from the first time I came to Lagos, which was, I think, I was, I was very, I didn't know anywhere when I came to Lagos. So from when I got to Lagos, I had my feet on the ground. I was, you know, going to radio stations myself, you know, getting to know people, you know, in the media, people that could help me by myself. So um, it wasn't that much of a change for me. Mm -hmm. It wasn't so. So are there people you look up to in the industry? Of course, there are people that I look up to. I mean, there are artists, there are um, um, OAPs that I admire as well. There are a lot of people in the industry. I mean, um, we have women breaking boundaries. We have um, Tiwa Savage. There's um, there's Simi. I'm a personal huge fan of Simi. And okay. I mean, there's Bernard Boy. He just got nominated, nominated for mm -hmm. a Grammy. Um, yeah. So if you have to get someone now, if you ask to mention just one name you want to feature or work with in the Nigerian music industry, who would you one mention name without I'm thinking much? <laughs> Burner Boy. Yeah. Why Burner Boy? I've always been a fan. Mm -hmm. I mean, from um, I beg, I beg, I beg. I, I was always listening to Burner. I've always loved Burner Boy. And thing is, I've always just wondered why he was so underrated. Because to me, at the time, himself and Wande Cole were like my top two mm -hmm. artists out of Nigeria. But I'm so happy that he's finally getting the recognition that he deserves. So, yeah. Well, there's a trend in the industry where you have artists falling out with their record label and they get into legend vibes. <laughs> and most recently, it's um, Peruzzi with his record label, Golden Boy. And not so many people oh, know yeah, I that. I think I saw that on Instablog. Yeah, not so many people knew that Peruzzi was actually on the Golden Boy. We have case with Rob Town and Eric Manny's record label. We have case like Kiss Daniel. What, what would you say artists who are upcoming need to be aware of before going in and signing any contracts? So Honestly, such things don't I, you. I feel like um, artists need to, you know what, just get a lawyer. Because <laughs> trust me, a lot of times, um, which you know some people can relate to, when an artist is struggling to get out there, the first thing that they think about is the fame. So they just want that you know exposure they just want people to hear their music and at that point in time they don't think about the business side of it 
Do you understand? Yeah. So they see somebody, they feel like, oh, this person has money or the person has, um, you know, strong grounds in the industry. So they feel like, oh, this person can help me. And then you get signed, you just sign a contract. You don't know what's on it. Do you understand? Yes. You sign it, you get there, and then you also now start to feel like, oh, why are they taking a higher percentage than me? Because I am the talent. So if I don't sing, the label doesn't make money. So that's a, a lot of times, that's what the artists feel. Do you get? Yeah. And um, I feel like artists need to, you know, become a bit more, you know, think about the business side of things as opposed to just, you know, the fame. And then also be humble. Like, mm. just honor your contract. So as a female artist, if you have the power to change something in the industry, what would that be? Oh, wow. If I had the power to change something in the industry, um, if I had the power to change, as a female, okay, mm -hmm. interesting, um, I would actually have more female artists on bills, on shows. I mean, sometimes you see a show and then there's just one female artist. And I mean, there are a lot of good female artists out there there are a lot of female artists that are popping but you know the industry makes it seem like it's a it's a you know patriarchal you know kind of thing where just mm. the men you know are or maybe the event organizer just wants to sell their tickets yeah but at the end of the day i mean you need to give people a shot right mm -hmm. even labels don't want to sign females because they feel like oh um you're going to follow one man and run away, or <laughs> or you um, at some point you want to get married, you want to have children, so you start to lose your shape, you know your interests change yeah. because your love is your concentration is now on your children. So most of the time, people feel like um, females have shorter shelf life mm. than yeah, the male, male so they feel which, like which is not you so know far men are yeah. a better investment. But then again. If you check it around the world, the biggest artists are women. Mm -hmm. You have Beyonce, you have Rihanna, you know, you have Taylor Swift. These are women. It's easy to call these people Beyonce, Rihanna, Taylor Swift, but do you think female artists in Nigeria have gotten that discipline? Because it takes discipline to remain where they are, from what they eat to their lifestyle, regardless of even the yeah, children but they if have. You, yeah, if, but obviously, it but, takes. But when, do when, we have when, that when, discipline? When, of course we do. But the thing is, when you want to compare mm -hmm. certain things, like, come on, Beyonce has a personal trainer. She has. Do you get what I'm do, trying do to say? Do you have a personal trainer? I don't have a personal trainer, but I'm just saying it's Why, expensive. Why are you making it sound like having a personal trainer is expensive? No, no, no. Because these people, record labels abroad, they don't mess with their artists. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. They don't mess with their artists. You have so somebody the planning your diet. Yeah, don't provide personal trainers. Well, not that I know of. Mm -hmm. But what I'm looking at is, I mean, you are in the business. It is your business. And it, it is your business. It is important course, for you to I'm also just, find I'm, a way I'm to just take saying, care of yourself. I'm just saying that mm -hmm. you cannot... How do I explain it? Well, yes, it is your duty, do you understand? But at the end of the day, I feel like if, you, if, we, if certain female artists were given certain opportunities that these other people have or had as much invested in them as these other people have, they would do just as well. But it does take a lot of self-discipline. I'm not a record label, but I, I don't see and I'm I don't give, feel like we I, have I, that I'm going to give props to um, Tiwa. Mm -hmm. You can't say that. I mean, Tiwa has a child. Mm -hmm. She has a son. Oh, and, she looks, to and she has been able to bounce she, back, she, right? Is, I think she's in her 40s. She's in her 40s. So she's in her 40s. And she looks amazing. She looks amazing. Uh, quickly, Do you understand? Before, before we go, um, let's talk about your new single in, in a minute or so, if we can. I mean, sure. You featured um, YC. YC. Tell yes. us about that, please. Um, it's called INK, Inc. Inc. It's um, actually a short form for I Know No. Okay. So I didn't want to just title it. I don't know. So I, I just, don't know. Yeah. So I called it Ink, mm -hmm. and um, it's a love song. Um, I actually recorded the song alone at first, and then um, I had two people in mind, as always. <laughs> um, I thought either Poe or YC. Okay. Oh. But um, when we sent, when I sent it out to them, YC seemed, you know, more, more eager. eager, more interested in the song because he actually really liked the song. And truth is, that's what I look for most of the time, and I think that's how collaboration should be. Mm -hmm. um, you know, both parties have to be into the song. Both parties have to like the song, not just because you want, you know, another artist to, you know, be on the song and mm -hmm. stuff. So, 
that was how it happened. He mm -hmm. recorded it, and yeah, it's out. You guys can check it out. It's um, on pretty much every um, digital platform, and um, it also has a video, so you can check that out on YouTube. And um, yes, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. So this is a festive period. What do we expect from you? Oh wow, festive period. Truth is. Um, Last year was quite quiet for me, so um, I've got a couple of, you know, shows that should be coming up in December, and um, I might be putting out a new single, but mm. I'm not entirely, you know, sure yet. But you guys, just keep your eyes out. We'll get in an album anytime soon. Not an album yet, but an EP, an EP. next year. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay, yes. so this is time where you sing. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is yeah, ready? go ahead. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll sing um, Ink. Okay. All right. If no be you, you, I don't need a boo, boo. If no be you, you, I know no how this life could be without you, my baby. True, true, I don't need a boo, boo. If no be you, you, I know no how this life could be without you, my baby, yeah. Did someone inspire that? <laughs> I would like. I, I actually did like somebody at the time. Ah, okay, yeah. that's so cute. Okay, I think that's how I wrap up this episode of Tea Time. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, you can catch up on this episode and all exclusive content by subscribing to our YouTube channel, La Plus TV Africa. You can also watch Tea Time on Auto TV and in London on Ben Television. My thank you as always will go to my co anchor, Benny Ak, and the entire production team. And of course, our studio guest, Suti. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. My name is Elsie Godwin saying thank you for watching.